Juno is only accessible by either plane or boat. The lack of road systems connecting it to the rest of Alaska, Canada, and the U.S. is due to the extremely rugged terrain surrounding the city. For some great views of Juno, there is a tramway. In Juneau, we decided to do a hike and whale watching. The hike was through a rainforest ending at the Mendehall Glacier. Along the way, we saw our first porcupine in the wild. Along the hike, it is quite evident that the glacier is receding, but there is good news. The melting ice has formed the Mendenhall Lake. The lake's ecosystem is special and is a nursery for a variety of fish. As we sped across the water, we took in the beautiful, unspoiled views of Juneau. We saw eagles and seals, but of course, we were looking for whales. Today we were in luck as we spotted a humpback whale. We were even more fortunate because she breached several times. to Glacier Bay is the highlight of an Alaskan cruise. The Glacier Bay Park Rangers boarded our ship early in the morning. They stayed all day to provide history, scientific information, and to answer questions. Glacier Bay is less than 250 years old. In the late 1700s, Glacier Bay was simply all glacier and no bay. Some good news, in Glacier Bay, some glaciers are retreating while others are advancing. The ice is so blue in parts of the glaciers because when light hits the compacted ice, long wavelength colors like red are absorbed while short wavelength colors like blue are reflected.
We also saw lots of wildlife like this mountain goat. Just look where he found a patch of grass. At the end of the day, a boat came back to take the park rangers to the Glacier Bay Ranger Station. This was all done while we were underway. Sitka was originally settled by the Russians in 1799. After losing the Crimean War, Russia decided in 1867 to sell Alaska to the United States. monument is titled The Prospector. We took a haunted historical tour of Sitka. Our tour included a walk through the old graveyard in search of paranormal activity. Ketchikan is another Alaskan city that is accessible only by ship or by plane. Ketchikan is best known for four things, salmon, tranquil scenery, an incredible rich Alaskan native history, and rain. Needless to say, we saw all of these things, including the rain. In Ketchikan, we took a photography safari led by longtime Alaskan resident Mike Cook. This tour provided many different looks at Ketchikan. Salmon come back to the place they were born to spawn. In just a few more weeks, you will see nothing but salmon in this creek. The Totem Heritage Center preserves the artistic traditions of the native peoples of Alaska. Ketchikan is home to the largest collection of totem poles in the world, including some of the oldest ones still in existence. The carvings on totem poles often have symbolic meaning, which can be complex. We walked through the marina taking photos of old ships, but the highlight was seeing sea anemones in the wild. Our last port of call was Victoria, British Columbia, where we took a walking tour. We visited the home of Elizabeth Carr, a famous artist and writer in Victoria. We saw many Victorian, Edwardian, and craftsman homes. We walked through Beacon Hill Park where a peacock took center stage. The Empress is a lovely building and is one of the oldest hotels in Victoria. It faces the city's inner harbor and is one of Canada's Grand Railway Hotels. Music 
The British Columbia Parliament buildings also face the Inner Harbor. With its 3,333 lights, the building is stunning at night.